the show starts in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. Whether you're new to sales or a lifetime veteran, the Black Belt Sales Podcast will sharpen your sword and guide you to master the art of sales. And now, here's your host, the ninja himself, Gene Slade. Hey, welcome back to the Black Belt Sales Podcast. This is Gene Slade. I'm the owner of Lead Ninja, and I have got one of our executive coaches in the booth with me this morning. His name is Don Johnson, and he's right over here if you're watching on video. Good morning, Don. Good morning, Gene. It's an exciting day. It's fun to get to do this again and again. It's, Thank you. It's exciting, too, after our Tuesday and Thursday Lead Ninja Mastermind calls where we train technicians to hear all of the successes. I tell you, Tuesdays and Thursdays are some of the best days in my life nowadays. It is it is really fun when we get those successes and you see people who have just changed their lives. Darren, Dylan, a um, couple of great examples we went through today. 457% increase in the in a two month comparison before starting training and two month after. And really that's not a perfect comparison because he was still learning through that two month yeah. in the comparison on the other side. It, it, if you just take his runway right now, it's off the charts, even higher than that. So 10 X that you hear out there is possible when you train. And that's really important yeah. topic. So it's great. So Darren, as we, there's a lot of different ways to measure your success, guys, right? But, and but we'll just talk about one right now, and that is average revenue per call, and that includes your zero tickets. And that's what Don's talking about here. Darren has seen a 457 percent increase in his revenue per call by going to the mansion event, and right. then Dylan went to the mansion event as well, and he has seen. A four hundred and thirty percent increase in his average revenue per call. His closing ratio now is at eighty eight point one five percent. I think Don, up from about fifty percent before the mansion, and his average tickets have just gone through the roof. And he's getting more um, feedback, positive reviews, thank yous from his clients than he's ever gotten before. And you know, I think in our industry, a lot of times people think when you're getting customers involved with ancillary products that you're just out there to sell them something and nothing could be further from the truth with these two guys. They really are out there trying to help people and you don't realize how little you're helping people when you're not getting them involved. Let's say in HVAC with the breathe easy packages with, when the plumbers are not getting them involved in the water treatment products that actually have a massive impact on their lives. You're just not going to receive the gratitude from your clients that you otherwise would receive. So there's, yeah. multitude of reasons to train but think about that if you could get your technicians to increase their revenue per call by 400 percent, mm -hmm. can you see now why i say that you're paying for them to go through our training whether you get it or not and in fact in fact you're paying a whole lot more you're probably paying the equivalent of what it costs to come to our training every single month, every single month, over and over and over again. So it is way cheaper to train than to not train. And you're going to have all the excuses in the world. All the excuses in the world are going to come up for you not to spend the money. But that's the devil on your shoulder, guys. And you need to brush his ass off, all right? Because <laughs> you're paying for it, whether you get it or not. Right. That's a very good point. We make that with our clients all the time. If they, If you can show that they're paying for it whether they get it or not most people will go ahead and move forward and that's and that's what happens with training training is expensive the best training is expensive our training is expensive but it's just more expensive not to train so that's yeah. that's the point of it it yeah it's expensive and when you look at it, a return on investment don like you could you could get someone to train you for about half of what we would charge but if they if they only get you a 20 or 30% increase, was it the right decision? 
when you could have gotten a three or four or 500 percent or more increase in 30 to 60 days i mean it just makes absolutely no sense not to pull the trigger on it you're paying for it whether you get it or not but that's neither here nor there right now we're talking about active listening this morning right yes. Tom? A, little, a little plug for our for our own training a little, little bit of a pat on the back to the guys that are putting in the effort darren dylan and yep. a bunch of other guys but yeah today active listening why what is it why do we need to care i thought we'd just memorize these scripts and just say stuff you know just quote them and people buy but active listening is part of the the process right active listening is you know the old saying you know in sales that if you will listen to your client they'll tell you how to close them i've heard that phrase i'm not sure that i love that phrase but it's out there and it's i like the value that it talks about is if you listen people will often tell you things that you never even crossed your mind to even say or cover. And that's what part of this active listening is, is are you really hearing what they're saying? And does the client know that you're listening? And there's just some little short little phrases that you can add to your repertoire that kind of. We're going to go with, we're going to go into that a little bit later. Don't give it away right this second. All right. <laughs> let's, let's first talk about how do you become a capable listener, right? Because I know that most of you guys out there are not following what we would call a pre-planned presentation. So what's a pre-planned presentation? Um, I actually have written out every single word that I'm going to say when I walk through the door on my greeting. I have written out and scripted every single word that I'm going to say when I present my pricing. I have written out and scripted um, my my presentation for ultraviolet lights, for water treatment systems, for a surge protector, for a contactor, for a capacitor, for an easy start kit or compressor saver. All of that stuff is scripted out. So why is that important? Um, guys, if you are thinking about what you're going to say next, if you are winging it, and if you're thinking about what the customer is saying and what you're going to say next, you have already lost the battle and you are not listening actively. You have got to be able to go on autopilot in order to really, truly be able to listen and watch your client because they're going to have body language tells that will tell you how they're feeling. They'll tell you when they're uncomfortable. It'll tell you when they're actually excited and when they've got an endorphin rush, but you've got to know what to look for. And you can't know what to look for unless you have pre-planned all of that stuff out. So what does that mean for you? What does that mean for you if you don't have it planned out? It means that you're actually going to have to take the time off of work to go through and write down everything that you're going to say, practice it over and over again, and then go out and test it and hope that it works. Or you're going to have to hire somebody like us who's already written it all out for you, who, who, who's who got it in, in use all over the country and even all over the world already successfully and having those kinds of results. So which one sounds cheaper and faster to you? So first, Don, we've got to have a pre-planned presentation so that we can go on autopilot and actually listen. Next right. question is, um, how do your clients actually know that you're listening? And that's where I want to pass the ball to you. Well, active listening, and, and you're, it, there's a lot of body language that, that has to be involved. And so if you're on the video, you'll see some of it. You'll see me nodding my head while Gene's talking. You'll see... You'll see the 11s on my forehead. You know, again, we call that the little grooves that come in your forehead. Uh, I never knew that was called the 11s till you mentioned it. But I, you know, I was I was at the uh, um, I was at the store with my girlfriend, and you know, we were getting makeup or whatever she was doing, and I was over just kind of entertaining myself with the, and it was like this this. Uh, you know, this stuff is for the 11s. That's what it actually said on the box. Yeah. And you're like, I never knew that that's, really? what that, I thought that's what we called it. Yeah, I just thought that's what we called it. But it was on the box at this spa, the, all this facial stuff that you could buy. And it said, oh, it helped, it's for the 11s. Yep. <laughs> and I just laughed because it's like, we do that a lot. I mean, you're. That's you're why I say groups. that. Yeah. So Got to get the 11s uh, involved. Right here. You got to get the 11s involved. I can see them really, really strong with that. So if you're on video, but it's body language, it's nodding. If you were talking to your your dog, 
how do you, you know, again, we're talking to a puppy. You got to pretend like you're the puppy a little bit. Somebody's talking to you and you have to show that you're listening. Your head might tilt a little bit. I'm not going to say your tail needs to wag. That would be a puppy that would do that. But those body language feedback lets people know that you are listening. And that's what active listening is. It may be a little word like, hmm, oh, really? Some of those words in there is part of active listening, but it's more the body language. So it's not as scripted as uh, as, as our pre-planned presentation because we're just we're listening, but we have to give them Don, feedback. Mm. What's what is programmed into me? How do I let people know that I'm listening? And I was just doing it with you while we were planning yeah. out this episode, and you laughed about it, and I didn't even realize I was doing it, but I was yeah. acknowledging you that right. I heard what you said. What, what's what are the words I use? Easy to do is got it. Easiest phrase. Okay, got it, or just got it. Got that it. is a feedback mechanism to the client that says, I just heard you. It's so simple. You'll say it can't work. And he's like, it will. It's so simple. It just, it gives them a nice, comfortable feeling that you actually heard me. Oh, okay. Got it. There's I've been using that one now for about five years. I, I picked that up over at Landmark Worldwide when I was doing training with them. And it wasn't easy at first, but now it's second nature. And it's an acknowledgement to people that you got what they said. You heard it. And when you're just talking at somebody and there's none of that coming back at them every once in a while, a lot of times they're not making that strong connection with you that you really want to make. They're, you're, you're not, you don't have nonverbal rapport. And exactly. that's an even that's an even longer topic that we could get into in another conversation. Thank so um, not a problem. Got not it. A problem. Mm -hmm. OK, okay, no problem. OK, that's not a problem. OK, got it. All those are great feedbacks. It says, I listen. I heard you. Mirroring is also one. We know Chris Voss training. If you haven't seen him, read his book. We, we really like a lot of what he, he talks about, but he's great at the mirroring. I He's amazing. That, he's probably the best. We, he's, he's the best I've ever seen. Yes. Uh, I, he is really good. His training is, it, it, you can get some real easy videos out there and you can see him. But um, the mirroring part of it, I believe when you're first in your greeting and someone tells you what's going on with their system, mirror the whole thing back. Let them know within the first one, two minutes of this call that I'm listening. And it doesn't mean paraphrase it. I've heard, I've seen people say, summarize it. That's not listening quite the same. Par use their words. They pick their words because they think they're perfect. When you correct their words, they, they feel like they were wrong. And now we're making customers and clients feel wrong within two to three minutes of the call use their words. They thought they were perfect. Now Let me give you guys correct. an example. Let me give you guys an example. Somebody says something to you, whatever it is. And um, here, here's, here's a perfect example. I want to think about it. Right. But I want to think about it. Doesn't give you enough information to be able to come back and still stay in the game. Right. If you, they say, I want to think about it. Like it's not even a real objection. Something else has happened. So one way to use mirroring to get them to say more about what they just said is to take what they said and repeat it back in the form of a question. And that's exactly what Don's talking about here. So if they said, I want to think about it, I would go, you want to think about it? Mm -hmm. Get the 11s involved a little bit. Shut up yep. and don't say anything. People are typically uncomfortable with silence. So they're going to be pushed towards or feel like they need to talk. And typically they will open up and give you more information. And it'll go from, and I want to think about it to, well, my neighbor got one for this and I need to get other quotes now, or I need to talk to my spouse, right? I want to think about it's a smoke screen objection, right? So when a client says something to you, that does you, you're not getting it all. You need more information. You can just repeat what they said exactly, but in the form of a question. So that would be an example of mirroring and how you would use that technique to get more information. And then there's another thing that you can do to get more information. 
you want to write this down, guys, if you haven't written this down. I'm going to give it to you here in just a second. Don, bring me back, okay, because I'm going to go over here and ask them to go ahead and please put live down in the comments right now. Put live down in the comments if you're watching live. That's the fee for the show, all right? This, that's what we do this for. We do this for likes and for shares and for comments, okay, because that helps with the algorithm to push this out to more people. So if you're watching on a replay, please put replay in the comments. If you're watching live, please put live, and I thank you very much in advance. Don, those other words that they want to write down are, can you say more about that? Six magical words that will get a client to open up. Not, can you tell me more about that? That's not the same. Can you say more about that? You want to write those words down, guys. Those words will get clients to open up to you and help you to stay in the game when you don't know what to say back to a client. Um, Don, I'm going to roll it back over to you. Yeah, and we had that this morning where someone said, you know, I, I, you know, went from about to close to I need to think about it and was was no other information. It was just day. It was what happened. And can you say more about that? And maybe even that confused look or the uh, the elevens, as we say, the facial expression, the body language. Can you say more about that? And and the, those words are magical, if I can say, if I can phrase it that way, because we often wanted to say, can you tell me more about that? Right. And that was my bad habit for years. Can you tell me more? Can you tell me more means I'm making myself really more important than yeah. them. It's all about me. Come on now. Then than it is. And when can you say more about that means it's more about you. It's more about them. Customer focused, uh, customer centered. Customer, it changes. It's really almost the same question, but it changes the importance in, in how you're empathizing with them and how you're letting them be the priority. Can you say more about that? So simple. Well, so and mirror, it gives them, can you say more about it, that? It gives them an opportunity to talk and to be heard. Like, guys, really, audience members, people that are listening right now, when was the last time that you felt truly? heard when was the last time you felt truly heard at work when was the last time you felt truly heard in your relationship hmm has it been a long time can you even remember and when that happened how did it feel if that were to happen to you and somebody was to actually listen to you and really truly hear you and have all their thought and intention on helping you how would that make you feel it make you feel good and listen your job is to make people feel good about buying from you. Okay. Yes. And these might seem like little things that we're sharing with you, but you start to add all of these things up and you become Dylan, who goes from an $800 average ticket to $2,400, increases his revenue per call by 430% in a matter of 30 days. I mean, that's what we're talking about here. So put it all Amazing. together, guys. Put it all together. Amazing. So that's mirroring. And then you brought up one more thing that we're probably going to want to talk about today. And that was labeling. Now, Label. I have a little bit more difficult time explaining this than you. And I'm going to try to make sure you don't go off like a freight train and talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. But please help me to understand what is an example of labeling in a conversation. You and I are at the table and... I'm feeling a certain way. You're picking up something from me because you are actively listening and you're going to label what it is that you're hearing and try to get confirmation from me as to whether or not that's the truth. I know that was a mouthful, but so I'll try to say it yeah. one more time. He's going to pick up a feeling from me and he's going to try to label it and repeat it back to me and confirm that what he's picking up is the truth or not. All right. Big, big thing here. And this we're, right. we're talking the 3.0 type of sales thing, guys. Yeah, this is definitely a Chris Voss class on labeling. And and we do it wrong in our industry by saying stuff like, what I'm hearing you say, again, that's all about me. It's not about them. And you just simply label it with these four little easy phrases. Seems like, sounds like, feels like looks like i'm hitting one of the senses right and then just the word like easiest one or, or my favorite is just seems like seems like that's something that's bothering you seems like that's something that might 
stop this whole deal from going through. They're going to tell you something more. It's another form of getting them to say more about this situation, right? It's it's another sounds level like, of getting them to say more. Yeah, it sounds like there's nothing I can do to change your mind. Yeah. I've got, that I've got was one that you went great over. examples. Yeah, I've got, sounds like, uh, sounds like there's nothing I can do to change your mind. Seems like you have a reason for saying that. Um, it seems like you're hesitant. Um, it looks like something just crossed your mind. That one is good. <laughs> that one is very good. It oh, looks you like guys should be writing this stuff mind. down. So, um, but it how do you like know you... when to use all this stuff, right, guys? Like, and that's part of why you've got to start somewhere. You've got to get yourself a foundation of training to be built upon so that you can get to this level. Sure. Don, um, real quick, I got to bring something into this. So you said seems like, feels like, sounds like, looks like. And something occurred to me when I heard the sounds like and looks like, because if I know that somebody is a visual person, as opposed to processing stuff more auditorily, I will use the looks like, or um, how does how does all this look to you, right? Exactly. And then if I know somebody is an auditory person, I'll say, is all this sounding good to you? Now, how do you guys know whether or not they're a visual person or they're an auditory person? So one quick little tell, and we're getting into... I think it's called psycho neuromotor linguistics right now. Um, but if somebody, when you ask them a question or when they're talking to you, keeps looking up and to the left, that's a sign that they're pulling pictures or videos from their past, their memory, right? right. And they tend to be more of a visual person. So when I'm talking to that person, I will use words like it looks like or um, how does all this look to you or does mm -hmm. this look good to you? Right. And then if I they're looking down into the right a lot, I know that they're accessing things they've heard in their memory, audio files, if you will. And so I will talk to that person and say stuff like sounds like or um, right. all of this is sounding good to you. Right. So, um, so fair enough. What's that? The whole, the whole Jordan Belfort, if anybody knows that name from Wolf of Wall Street movie, his really famous line is sounds fair enough. And he put it in a question. Sounds fair enough. It, his whole basis was, was the, the auditory sales and it, he was doing phone sales. So it made a little more sense to, to do that. But when you're in front of a client and you can read which one they are and yeah, there's some neural linguistic programming NLP that talks about reading eyes, but sometimes it's just listening People will use words they feel comfortable with and auditory people will use words that are more sound oriented, right? You know, that I, I need to talk. <laughs> Some of those things will come out. Let me look it over. That's a visual person, right? That's, that's somebody looking and seeing that in pictures. So if you start listening, finally start listening, they will tell you which which one they are. It's not as it's not in a, a perfect sentence, but they'll use the words that more they connect with somewhere in there. And that's where you can label it back using their words. Looks like this is something that's might might stop this from going forward. Feels like you're a little hesitant to move forward with this. Those are great labels. But again, all they are is the next level of getting someone to open up and say more about that, right? So first level is mirroring. Repeat it's getting it me done. It's getting me into a place where I get to use my listening, right? My listening, sorry for the hiccup, but I just yeah. wanted to bring it full circle. What Don's talking about, all this stuff gets us to a place to be able to try to listen, <laughs> which is We're where all the listening. magic happens. My head nods the whole time Gene's talking. If you're on video, you see it. Uh, some of you're on Apple and some of the Spotify's, you might not see it. But active listening is get your body involved, right? Get your hands out of your pocket. Get you know, um, nod your head. All of that body Don't language. Make your fingers says, behind your back. <laughs> yeah, all that body language says I'm really interested in in listening 
to you. And it could even be that lean in just a little bit. It's weird. Yeah. I get that, but that lean in, you're talking about an I just inch did it when you said that. Forward. Yeah. Your your head moves forward an inch or so. You're not talking about getting into their personal space. It's just leaning in and listening. It 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 that body language is is part of going to that next level. Once you have your words that you're not sitting there worrying what to say, pre-planned script, you can put these next level of items. We mirror. We then go, can you say more about that? And then we might start labeling. Sounds like, feels like, seems like, looks like that you're hesitant. Looks like you're hesitant to move forward. Seems like this is something that's bothering you. Looks like something just crossed your mind. Guys, if if you if you need or want more help putting all of this stuff together, um, I have got a few spots left in my calendar this week. If you will just put down in the comments like 30 minutes with Gene or or meet with Gene or something like that, I'll have my team shoot you over a link and I'll jump on a Zoom meeting with you for 15, 20, maybe 30 minutes, and I will help you some more on my dime. All right. Not a problem for me to do that. So just put meeting with Gene or something like that down in the comments. Or you can text me. I prefer that you put meeting with Gene and then text me. That way the algorithm gets pumped, right? But my cell phone number is 239-848-6533. 239-848-6533. Just shoot me a text and tell me just a tiny bit about who, who, who you are or whatever. At least give me your name. Right? Some people text and just start with a question. And I'm like, who am I speaking with? Right. So right. shoot me a text. I'd be happy to open up a couple of those spots for a few of you uh, this week, uh, potentially even right. beginning of next week if uh, my calendar doesn't allow it. Uh, but let us help you a little bit more. We're like drug dealers. The first one's free. Right. So <laughs> come on into our world and allow us to help you a little bit more. That's where the joy in our life comes from. And look, the money ain't bad either, right? We all got to pay our bills. Uh, thank you guys for taking the time this morning to make this video. Oh, it's our pleasure. I don't know who this is, but it's probably from one of the Facebook groups. Um, yeah, but, hey, listen, um, Don, let's run a video real quick for some of the people uh, about the next mansion experience. If you want more info on the mansion, just put mansion down in the comments. Essentially from the 28th of, is it 28th or 29th? 28th or 29th? 28th, 29th, 30th. Wednesday. First. Wednesday, yeah, the, the Wednesday. 29th. I think it might the be the 29th, 29th of May. Wednesday, the 29th. Wednesday, the 29th of May um, is when we check in at 6 p.m. So the 29th would be a travel day. The 2nd of June, you'd be headed back home. That's a Sunday morning, unless you leave out late Saturday night. But we'll be staying together at the mansion on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights. We'll have three full days of training three um, evening sessions, just not not formal sessions, but just being around the mansion, around the campfire, around the pool. There's a sitting area outside. There's a fire area. Um, I do have a private chef coming in for mornings, so you'll be fed a healthy breakfast. You'll have your choice of eggs, omelets, meats, things like that. And then I do have all of your lodging and your food covered. Uh, drug dealers. I don't know what that was, but something about financing with financing, right? <laughs> and yes, we do have payment plans for people who don't necessarily want to let go of whatever chunk of money it is that you end up deciding to invest. So um, put mansion down in the comments. If you want more information about that, um, check out this video. Don and I'll be right back to close out the show. And uh, by the way, if you're on Spotify or if you're on Apple or some other non-video podcast, Will you please, if you appreciate this information, if you appreciate what Don and I are doing for you today, will you please shoot over and give us a five-star review, say a couple of nice things, let us know what this is, how this is impacting you in, in your future. Um, and uh, check out this video real quick. We'll be right back.
Jonah Gorlitz. I'm from uh, Louisville, Kentucky. I've been doing HVAC for about one and a half, two years now, and I'm I work for Instant Air out of Shepherdsville, Kentucky. Hi, I'm Kim K. I work with Leaves Nearby, and I have been working with Leaves Nearby for over eight years, and we work with HVAC, electrical, and plumbing contractors. So my name is Chris Laurentino from Comfort Specialists. We're out of Morris County, New Jersey. But I've been in the industry about 17 years now. I joined the Mastermind because um, it's not just a sales force, actually, it's not really a sales force at all. So, so the reason that I joined the Mastermind is I've seen some people's results online. That this is different from other events that I've been to. I've been to various contest events for quite a few years now. It's really taught me how to understand and communicate to the customer well. It's actually my second uh, mansion trip from the community of how well some people have done, and I really wanted to be a part of that. And this one is the best thing. It's the most glamorous thing. And it's basically one training that builds upon each other. Fair and that's success. And I felt that the best way to achieve that was to actually get here and, and get involved in the training. And, and frankly, in, in my mind, there's no better way to train than, than in person. Since I've been in the class since December, my income has improved, my revenue for the company has improved, my customer relations have improved, and my call volume has decreased while the profits and everything else has increased. Being here is a unique experience that you can't replicate in just a Zoom class. There's so much more that you get out of this. And the other events I've met too, it's a lot of information on a lot of topics where this is very concentrated. I feel like it allows you to have more focus. Man, that gets me hyped for the next one, man. I am so ready. I'm I'm so ready for another 25 individuals to come to that mansion and to continue to see the kind of explosive growth that we're seeing uh, in personal lives and in uh, financial lives around the country. It's just a blessing. Don, what is one action step that you will leave the people with today? One thing that they can do to have a significant impact immediately? Start listening. I mean, obviously, and got it. Practice the habit of saying got it because it's not in your normal vocabulary. It's never in most of our vocabulary to acknowledge back that somebody. So one action item is go find places to say the word got it or OK, got it 60 to 65 times. That's the studies have said it takes about 60 times to do something before it really becomes you. So go make that, you know, you can do that over the next six months or you can do that over the next six days. Which one's going to be more effective? Let's figure out a way to say, got it. And then from there, obviously all the rest of the techniques, the mirroring and things of that nature are wonderful. So I would say, got it as my one action step today. Start showing people that you are actually listening. So my one action step that I'll leave you guys with today is to begin immediately, like yesterday, to invest in yourself, all right? I was taught that until I had at least six figures in the bank of free cash flow, that as many dollars as I could pull out of my bank account and put back into here, the better, right? Um, to, to this day, I've invested hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. We're, we're nearing the million dollar mark in investment in myself. So guys, start to invest in yourself now. If there was ever a good time to invest in yourself, when would it be? And mm-hmm. stop making excuses for 
not having the money to do something. If your engine failed in your car tomorrow, you would figure out how to fix it. There's absolutely no reason that each and every one of you cannot afford to invest in yourself. So right. take the time, take the money, invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. And for anybody, for the next three people that sign up for the mansion event coming up the 29th of May through June 2nd, the next three people that invest, I'm going to upgrade you from a bunk to a king suite on Lead Ninja, on Don and I. All right. So first three people. So if you want to be one of those people, put King Suite down in the comments or text me. The number was up before. It's 239-848-6533. And we'll get you hooked up. Don, thanks for joining us today. Look forward to seeing you on Tuesday, brother. Or no, Thursday. See you on Thursday. Right. Yeah. When would now be a good time to start? I think that's a wonderful statement. It's a funny statement. But when would now be a good time to start? Because so many people want to plan for something in the future today. Take action. When would now be a good time to start? So I, I throw that out there because of the way you said it. And I want to do a shout out to Bobby. He listens to these. I haven't seen him in class in a few weeks. A uh, few few sessions. I hope he's having great success, but I want to I want to see him back in class on the next on the next class. Bobby, if you, when you're listening to this, I'm shouting out to you. Let's do it. And OK, somebody's asking for the dates again, Gene. The dates again are May 29th. That's a travel day. It's a Wednesday. So you'll be traveling to the mansion Orlando MCO Airport on the 29th of May. You will leave on Sunday morning and head back home. That is the 2nd of June. So Wednesday night, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you come home. All right. So it's not that bad at all. Uh, put Mansion down in the comments if you want more information on that or shoot me a text. Make sure you, that you're one of the first three so that you get the King Suite upgrade. Cool. Don, thanks again for joining us this morning. Awesome. Ninjas, until next time, have a great day. Bye. Bye, Gene. Thanks.